Now, describing distribution with numbers. Suppose we are given a list of numbers, okay? X list, one, 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 two, two, three, 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 five, seven, nineteen. The variable itself, we use capital letter. But each observation, we use lowercase. So this is X1, this is what? X12, okay? And look at the list. Remember the real life data in scramble order, they don't have any order. So the first step when people give you a data set is try to arrange them into what? Ascending order, okay? So this is X1 up to X12. And the number of observation, the size of the least n equal to 12, okay? First one you want to know what's the size of the data, 12. And since I put in ascending order, I know the maximum is 19, the minimum is what? Is one, okay? And the range is defined to be maximum minus minimum, which is what? Which is 18, okay? And why we want to study range? The range of a given list measures the spread. Or you say dispersion. Of the given distribution, okay? Now, next one, mode. What's mode? The most frequently observed numbers in the given list, okay? Uh, let me put uh, up right. Okay. So look at the list. One, 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 one. One, 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 one. You have four ones. Okay. You have four ones. Two, two. Three, three. Three, one five, one seven, one nineteen. Then you draw a nice smooth curve goes through the tops. Okay, this is a big picture. So from the picture you can see what is mode. Mode is a location. But you will see the highest peak. Of the graph, okay? So that's mode, okay? Uh, in our case, mode is one, because you see what? One, it has the highest peak at that location. Um, mean is average, okay? In our example, x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to x12, divided by 12. And this is a notation we commonly use, okay? Dimension xi, i from one to three. This means x1 plus x2 plus x3, okay? This is a notation we use. Sum up the numbers and then divide it by what? size of the observation. So this one give us the formula of what? Average or mean, okay? Uh, depends on the given list. Depends on this list, represents a population or represents a sample. We use different notation. Okay? If the given list represents a population, we use mu. Mu is a Greek letter, mu, okay? Uh, right like this way. This is mu. This is not u, this is mu, okay? And sample mean, we use bar, okay, x bar, okay? Uh, for a very quick and easy example, let's look at the, uh, 
the example we covered before, okay? Okay, if the given list represents a population, use me. If the given list represents the sample, we use R. Okay. This notation is quite, actually what? Quite standard. Almost all the textbook use up. Okay. So look at our example. I have 12 students in the class. Tell me, this represents, these numbers represents a population or represents a sample? Anybody know? It represents what? A population. If you don't know it represents population, that means you did not read the notes last time. Okay? I say it here. It's a population. So this is H1. This is H2. This is up to what? H12. I want to add up these 12 numbers. Okay? H1 plus H2 plus all the way up to H12 divided by 12. Or you say this is 155 centimeter, you add it all the way up to 181 centimeter. Then you divide it by 12. Because the given list represents population, so we use mu h. Okay? That's the population mean. Now, see student in the class. Look at here. Peter, what? Well, Peter, Yuki, and what? And Eric. Okay? Three students. And remember what is a sample? Sample is a subset of the population. Sample is a subset of the population. So three students, okay, three students. Um, Peter is, Peter was 176 centimeter tall, and Yuki was 172. And Eric is 172. And then you divide it by three. This is what? Sample average. Because the population, we have 12 students. And these three students, Yuki, Eric, and Peter, they just what? Form a sample. Okay? So if we want to find, if we want to find the average of the three students in the sample, we're going to use what? We're going to use H bar. How is it? Bar stands for the sample. And mu h represents what? The population mean. Okay, give you one minute. Uh, the reason why we say mean is arithmetic mean, because there's another mean for what? Geometric mean. Okay, usually people use in the daily life when they say average or mean, that means what? Arithmetic mean. Okay, and mathematic. Mathematician know there's another mean called geometric mean. So I'll just give you two examples. I'm not going to cover this in the class. Okay? Uh, please read it yourself. Uh, next one we're going to cover, we're going to cover. Next one, we're going to cover median. Okay, we're going to cover median. And how we define median? Okay, this is a very formal definition. 50% of observation less equal to median, and the other 50% of observation greater equal to median. Okay, uh, to better describe the concept, I'm going to use what? Uh, separate people. Okay, so uh, I recommend you when you copy the notes, you should also uh, print the notes in one page so you can use the back to what to take extra notes okay um median all people call this is what the 50 percentile and how we define median the lower 50% of observations. It'd be less or equal to median. And the upper 50%
50% of observation should be greater or equal to median. So by this definition, you can clearly find median is used to locate the middle numbers. Okay, median is used to locate what? The middle numbers. Okay, look at the uh, two example, case one. If number of observation is what? Is odd. Say I have a double W list. Okay. Okay, how many number are they in the list? Hmm? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And can I say the middle number is five? Yes. Well, unfortunately, this is what a lot of people will make this mistake. Okay. Now, before you find the middle number, what you should do? Remember when people give you a data set, you should put it in what? Ascending order first, okay? So put in ascending order. That is one, two, two, and then five, five, seven. So this is a middle number. And median is a middle number, okay? So, Look at here, when n is odd, we have we have only one middle number. We have only one middle number, okay? The pound sign stands for number, okay? When n is odd, we have only one middle number. And the only middle number is median. Okay? And let's look at the second case. If n is even, then we have two middle numbers. Okay. When n is even, then we have two middle numbers. Look at our example, x least. One, 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 two, two. Three, 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 five, seven, nineteen. This is X one, X two. This is X six, X seven, X eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay. When n is even, we have two middle number. Two and three are the middle number. And in this case, what will be the median? The median. is the average of two middle numbers. So in this case, it's two plus three divided by two. Okay, two plus three divided by two, and that is what? That is 2.5, okay? That is 2.5.
Okay, we have covered three number, four numbers so far. First one is range. Range is used to what? Describe the spread of a distribution. And then we introduce you mode, mean, or you say average, and what? Median. These three numbers are used to describe the central tendency. Okay. Uh, we use mo, mean, median to describe what? The central tendency of a distribution. Central tendency, or you say the center of a distribution. Okay. Um, and then we're going to introduce you quartile. Introduce you quartile. Okay. Q1, Q2, and Q3. Okay. Let me introduce it one by one. First one, Q1. Q1 is the first one, the first quartile. Or some people say this is what? What do you know about a quarter? A quarter is 25 cents, right? So how we define the first quartile? Uh, people say this is also called the 25th percentile. And what's the definition for Q1? We say the lower 25% of observation to be less or equal to Q1. And simultaneously, it means the upper 75% of observation should be greater equal to what? Q1. Okay. And also, let's look at Q3. Q3 is called what? The third quartile. Or we say this is the 75th percentile. And let's look at the definition. It means the lower 75% of observation to be less equal to q3 while the upper 25 percent of observation should be greater equal to one okay so this is q1 is q q2 people may ask scott you forget to mention about q2 right where is q2 what is q2 well if you move 25% of observation from here to here, it becomes 50-50. If, me, if you move 25% of observation from here to here, this is also 50-50. And that's simply the definition of what? Of median. So Q2 is median. The second quartile is median. So what is the relationship between Q1, Q2, and Q3? Look at here. What is the relationship of Q1, Q2, and Q3? Now, begin with Q2. Q2 is median. And what's median? Median is the middle number. That divides the distribution. Divide the distribution into two parts of equal size, okay? 
So median is a middle number that divides the distribution in two parts of equal size. Okay. So let's use let's use what our x least as example. One 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 two two three 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 five seven and nineteen. Okay. Um, this is x one x two x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, x8, x9, x10, x11, and x12. Okay. Now median is a middle number divide the least into two parts of equal size. You cut it right here, right? This is the first half. This is the second half. Okay. So median in, the, in this case, Q2. Q2 is equal to median. And that is the average of two middle numbers. In our case, 2.5. Okay. So median, median is a middle number divided the least into two parts of equal size. And what's Q1? Q1 is a middle number of the first half. And what's Q3? Q3 is the middle number of the second half. Okay, so that is a relationship between Q1, Q2, and Q3. Okay. Uh, based on Q1, Q2, Q3, or we say Q1 and Q3, we give you a more a new definition. Okay. We define IQR. It's a abbreviation of inter quartile inter quartile range. And it is defined to be Q3 minus Q1. Why we want to study this number? Well, it has at least what? Two purposes. A, it is used to describe the spread. of middle 50 percent of observation and second purpose it can be used to detect all liars okay remember all liars they are the extreme observations okay and how we detect all liars by using iqr there's a rule called the 1.5 iqr rule okay we use 1.5 iqr rule to detect all liars okay let's begin with the first one um interquartile range used to describe the spread or middle 50 percent of observation okay why we say that let's use x least as an example one 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 two two three 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 five seven nineteen okay and this q2 q2 is a middle number q1 is a middle number of the first half. Q3 is a middle number of the second half. Okay. From here to here, I remove the lower 50% of, no, sorry, 25%. <laughs> I remove the lower 25% of observations. And here, I remove the upper fifty uh, upper what twenty five percent, and from here to here, this distance 
is called IQR. And that is Q3 minus Q1. Huh? This one measure the spread. For middle 50% of observations. So IQR is used to measure, okay? IQR is used to measure the spread for middle 50% of observation, okay? Now, we can use IQR to detect outlier. I don't think, uh, let's see, how many time I still have? No, I don't think I have time now, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop here, okay? I'm gonna stop here.